All right, in this video, we're going to talk about the reaction of small molecules like HCl across conjugated dienes. We're going to find that they work in a very similar way to how addition of HCl across an alkene works. There's a little bit of conjugation that we have to figure out in terms of the intermediate carbocation that we don't normally have. Um, that's going to extend our or increase our number of products that we can form. And we're going to see there's two different types of addition that we'll, that we'll have for conjugated dyne, so-called 1,2 and 1,4 addition. And all this means is 1,2 means that the hydrogen and the chlorine add on adjacent carbons. It doesn't have to be carbons 1 and 2 in the chain, so it's not this or this. As long as the H and the Cl add to adjacent carbons, that means 1,2, because 1,2 means the say or next two. 1,4 means the addition um, of H, H and Cl across carbons that are separated by two carbons. So, for example, we could say hydrogen adds here. The chlorine would then add from carbon 2, carbon 3, carbon 4. So carbons 2 and 3 separate the place of addition of hydrogen and chlorine. And we'll see exactly why that is here in just a minute. So let's use as an example um, the addition of HCl to uh, penta 1, 3 diene here. One important thing to understand is that uh, this is not asymmetrical diene. In other words, each of the double bonds is not exactly the same. This double bond is mono-substituted. This is di-substituted. So each one is different. So therefore, we should expect to get two different sets of products. So I'm going to deal with each double bond separately, and I'll deal with uh, I'll deal with this outer one first. Okay. So applying Markovnikov's rule, what do we do? Well, the double bond attacks the hydrogen, breaks the hydrogen-chlorine bond, and all right. So the uh, double bond attacks the hydrogen, kicks out the chlorine. Um, if if, if this whole structure looks a little weird compared to how it was before, I'm sorry, I had to erase it whilst it was paused. I don't need to worry about it. I've drawn everything out the way it was before, so don't freak out. Um, this double bond here is the one that was opened up. So this double one here is still there. If we apply Markovnikov's rule, where does the hydrogen go? Well, the hydrogen goes here. And so the plus charge goes here. And because this is a conjugated diene, this is where things get a little bit different to what you've seen before. Because usually what happens, and it still happens here, it just isn't the only thing. What normally happens is the chlorine then comes in and gives us um, our product. So let's just show that. Chlorine takes its electrons, attacks the carbocation, and gives us, if we just draw this out, and I'm showing the hydrogen here just so you can see the location of the hydrogen relative to the chlorine. So you can understand that this is, in fact, a case of 1, 2 addition. So the 1, 2 addition is what you get always before any resonance occurs. You only see the 1, 4 product after you've done some resonance. So anyway, this is a 1, 2 product. Now, bear in mind, though, this carbocation can actually do some, it can actually have some resonance stabilization. So I'm going to draw it out again down here. And if I ask you to show a mechanism for something like this, I'm always going to want you to do the same because this representation of this carbocation already has something happening to it. So don't try and show resonance on this at the same time as you show the chlorine attacking it. Remember we said before, always show two different things if you want to show two different things happening. And it won't be tied anybody that doesn't, because we've talked about it already. So here's that carbocation again. And this time, what can we do with that plus charge? Well, we can take this double bond. Remember, we have a one, two, three relationship between our double bond and our carbocation. So this can actually move over here, give that carbon back its four bonds, stabilize it, and so move that pi bond over. Notice I have a resonance arrow here, the double-headed arrow to indicate resonance structures. And my pi bond moves over here, and my plus charge ends up here. And once that's the case, the chlorine then comes in and does this. 
and so what we end up with is this and let's draw this out put this here this here and the hydrogen was here so the hydrogen is still here and now I'm going to number those carbons relative to each other one two three Four. I'm not doing this to figure out the name of the molecule. Well, I, I, I might do that, but all I want you to understand is these are 1, 4 relative to each other. That's a 1, 4 product. In some cases, the 1, 2, and 1, 4 product actually ends up being the same thing, which is what it is here. We'll see that in a minute when we name it. But the important thing is, here we underwent some resonance stabilization to give us the chlorine in a different place, or at least in theory. Now this only this is only one double bond. What about the other one? What about this one right here? Let's draw that out. So we're going to do exactly the same thing again. Okay. Except we're starting from the other double bond. Okay. So this double bond goes out and attacks the hydrogen, breaks that hydrogen chlorine bond, and we get out the intermediate carbocation. But now we have to be a little bit more careful. That double bond hasn't done anything. Notice this carbon and this carbon, these are essentially the same in terms of um, alkylation or in terms of number of substituents. It's one in each case. What we have to think about then is uh, this hydrogen is only going to go on one place because the carbocation is only going to one place. The carbocation is going to go to the place where it's going to be more stable. Now, if it goes here, it's secondary. If it goes here, it's secondary. But there's a reason why it goes here and not here. The reason why it goes here and it does that, the hydrogen goes here and causes it to be put there, is because with the plus charge here, you can do some resonance stabilization. With the plus charge here, you can't do that. So here is one possibility. And that chlorine comes in or can come in like so. That should, I, I should be showing it going to the carbon there. Naughty me, but that's what I'm supposed to be showing. So the hydrogen goes here. The chlorine goes here, and that double bond on the end hasn't done anything, so it stays there. Now, neither the hydrogen or the chlorine are on the end of the molecule here, but that's not important. What is important is that relative to each other, they are in a one-two relationship. In other words, they are next door to each other. Hence, that's a one two product. You could also say if you wanted to it's a two three product or a four five product or whatever the hell you want. The important thing is one two means they're next to each other. But what if this was to undergo raisin and stabilization just like this one did? Sorry I, I said raisin and so I think I got raisins on the brain. Resin and stabilization. Raisin. Alright so here's our hydrogen, here's our plus charge. Okay. And we can also show the resonance here in exactly the same way as we did before. We use our pi bond to relieve that middle carbon of its plus charge and thus move the pi bond elsewhere. Put the hydrogen here. So therefore the pi bond now goes here. The plus charge goes on the end. And then what happens next is the chlorine comes in. gives us that plus charge. All right, so what we end up with is this hydrogen here, pi bond here, and the chlorine is now on the end. And when we look at this, we said before that we only get one four products after resonance stabilization. And let's just check. These guys are indeed in a one four relationship. One four. All right. So really, um, when we'd normally expect to get one product from an alkene, for a conjugated dying, we actually get several. And the maximum possibility we can get is four. It turns out here we get one, two, three, four. But these two are actually the same thing. If you just flip this one over, then you get this one. And if you want to check whether these are actually different, well, let's just come up with the names for them, okay? Um, one, two, three, four, five. So we have five carbons here. The alkene is the functional group of dominance, so the chlorine acts as a, a substituent, okay? 
we start numbering from the side that gives the alkene the lowest possible number. So therefore, we, we start counting from the right, and we go one, two, three, four. So the chlorine is on carbon four. So therefore, what we get is four chloro. I'm running out of space here, so I'm going to write the rest underneath here. Pent two ene, or if you prefer, two pentene, four chloro, two pentene. Figure out the name of this one, and I think you'll see it's exactly the same thing. The, 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 the double bond starts on two, the chlorine's on four, therefore four chloro, two pentene again. Now let's go down to this one. Here the double bond starts on carbon one, and the chlorine is on carbon three relative to it, so therefore three chloro, three chloro, pent, the number here is going to be 1 because the alkene starts on 1. We don't just say pentene, we have to imply, the, we have to show the location, so 3 chloropent one And then down here, the alkene starts on carbon 2, the chlorine's on carbon 1, so therefore what we have as a name here is 1 chloro 2-pentene, sorry, I should say pentuene. I mean, scribble all that. I'm just trying to be consistent, no any me for screwing up. 1-chloro, pent... Oh, crap, well, yeah, I screwed up again. Sorry, it's too late and it's not even 9 o'clock. Oh, it is 9 o'clock. And I should be watching Monday Night Raw right now. In case you're wondering, Monday Night Raw is not something disgusting. It's... Uh, Wrestling, actually, you might think it's disgusting, but anyway, whatever. One chloropentuene. So, therefore, three different products. And that is how you apply um, electrophilic addition to conjugated dienes. What about pin the tail on the donkey? <laughs> we haven't got a donkey. Or uh, pin the tail on the chicken. We haven't got a tail. Well, pin the sausage on the chicken. We haven't got a chicken. <laughs> pin the sausage on the fridge. Or a pin. Sell a day of sausage to the fridge. <laughs> we haven't got a sausage. Put a bit of sell day on the fridge. <laughs> it's not much of a game, is it?